Yo, what's poppin'? Today we're gonna be going over this really, really cool article that actually just came out on Massively Overpowered. I will be linking this down below, but it's actually a really interesting interview between this little company, journalism company, you know, game review, whatever, and the developers of ESO about Gold Road coming up. I thought y'all would wanna see it, so let's go ahead and hop right into it, okay? Elder Scrolls Online's Gold Road chapter takes players back to Oblivion's best city on June 3rd. That's just factual information, okay? Um, with the conclusion of Elder Scrolls Online's stream this afternoon, we can finally talk about the new chapter dubbed Gold Road. The Elder Scrolls fans who played um, Oblivion will remember the Gold Road as the road that runs through the West Weald from Imperial City to Anvil on the Abessian Sea, just across the waterway separating Cyrodiil from Valenwood. The road runs directly through Skingrad, which will serve as the hub city for the chapter here too, as predicted and hoped for. True. Biomes include the autumn-themed Gold Road itself, which looks literally insane, first of all. This is like the prettiest zone. I'm a, I'm a Skyrim snob, and I'm a Snow Zone snob, but this zone is my, like by far, just from the pictures and the cutscenes and everything, it's already my favorite zone. The Valenwood Annexation, which is a jungle rainforest, and the Clovian Highlands. Now, this doesn't have to necessarily do with this, but when the Elder Scrolls Online first came out, we actually had a lot of trees in Cyrodiil, right? But I know like a lot of people, when you think about Cyrodiil, you think about the jungles of Cyrodiil, right? So we've seen in the trailer, we've had the Valenwood annexation. Ever since Athelia's kind of come into the picture, you've seen this crazy overgrowth um, in these different areas within um, this region, within Clovia, right? In my opinion, this game takes place before the Oblivion Crisis that you see in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Um, I think that the jungles of Cyrodiil largely um, come around possibly with the emergence of Athelia. I could be totally wrong, but that would make sense at least um, why we maybe don't see... I know, like, if we're being realistic here, it's, it's a performance issue, right? But, like, if they're trying to insert that kind of into the lore, I wouldn't be surprised if they're using that as a way to insert the jungles in the future and say, well, when Athelia finally came around at this point, that's when the jungle started growing and you had, like, the huge overgrowth and everything, right? Let's continue. Zenimax Online Studios' Rich Lambert noted that Gold Road is a full chapter with all the bells and whistles, including about 30 hours of story content, though the traditional pair of companions won't arrive until Q4, which is interesting. We're actually going to make a video about that, and I'll tell you all why um, in that video, why I think that is. The chapter includes the prologue and story questing, the hub city of Skingrad, 11 objectives, 6 delves and world bosses, 2 public dungeons, 1 trial, 1 world event, dailies tons more questing related to content housing antiquities and so on so literally exactly what every chapter has been for like the past five years and beyond that as he explained it 2023's necrom chapter ended on a cliffhanger players can expect cap requests to bridge the gap between the two chapters now necrom has been out for a little bit so i'm going to go ahead and say spoilers but in reality y'all should have played necrom by now um so we basically at the end of the story we learned that Athelia was a forgotten Daedric prince, that basically Hermaeus Mora had tried to wipe everybody's memory of, okay? And so she came back, and now the story that we're continuing going into Gold Coast is basically her release, her prominence in Tamriel, and all of that. And you can see that, obviously, with the trailer that I'm sure everyone's seen. The video makes clear that players will be investigating the rise of a new Daedric prince, Athelia, who's escaped her prison which was, I believe, now I know that her, her Daedric realm that she kind of presides over is called Miramor. I don't think that's where her prison was. I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that, but it didn't look like there was really anything there. Um, and given that, you know, the new type of Daedra, Thoat, like all the mirror kind of looking Daedra that we see, it doesn't seem like that's the case that she was in Miramor, but I'm not quite sure. Um... Yes, that means a big new addition to the lore. Players will also be investigating a splinter group of Bosmer called the Recollection, which is generating fresh magic jungle in the West Weald. So maybe it's up to them. Maybe the Recollection is what ends up causing the jungles of Cyrodiil. Perhaps even more interesting than the plot is the addition of the new scribing feature. I'm so freaking pumped about this. We're going to do a video kind of giving you my initial impressions on this, but overall my impression is it looks freaking amazing. 
The devs were quick to clarify that scribing is not a direct port of spellcrafting from earlier Elder Scrolls games. Instead, it's the team's own take on a precursor to spellcraft that makes sense as an early version in the lore. So there's a number of reasons for this. Number one, it does make sense that there was going to be like a precursor to pretty much everything we see in the schools of magic that we're used to, like alteration, illusion, all that stuff, right? But I think the big thing is it was extremely hard to balance spellcrafting in a single player game. Imagine trying to balance the actual spellcrafting in an MMO, um, especially being that Zoss has still not started or figured out a way to balance PvP and PvE separately. Because every single time you do something for PvE, it screws PvP or vice versa. There's not really a lot of updates that they do to combat that is beneficial across the board, most of the time. Okay, scribing allows players a new element of customization for Gold Road players as they spend inks to combine grimoires and scripts to make their own spells within the strict balance related confines of the system. There's also a new styling feature. Now these are two separate things. I've seen a lot of content creators come out and talk about scribing and styling these are two completely separate different features so the way that styling is discussed and displayed is similar to the customized actions that we have currently now when customized actions first arrived all the players were definitely excited including myself before we learned that they were only going to be sold in the crown store what zoss does not realize and they're starting to what Zoss does not realize is a microtransaction ridden game takes a lot of gameplay out of the game and just allows you to buy it, right? Like the fact that you can buy full on motif books of styles that you can earn in Dungeons and Trials takes away the excitement of getting that stuff in the Dungeon and Trial. Now that doesn't mean you can't say, I'm not going to buy that, I'm only going to earn it, but it doesn't feel as good across the board when you do stuff like that the same thing with mounts like mounts are typically a really great chase item in mmos across the board some people don't care some people are coming from single player elder scrolls games and they want the non-flashy mounts only the realistic ones to be in there i get it but it's an mmo 100 percent. now i know that they've said it was an rpg first and an mmo second that doesn't change the fact that it's an mmo rpg what they prioritize first doesn't change the fact that there are MMO elements and it's an MMO. You're going to have MMO players and MMO players love mounts, plain and simple. And 95% of the mounts at least are in the store. That's a bad look. And it turns off a lot of people from the game because that's one of the things that, you know, when you get burnt out on quests and grinding gear, you can go grind mounts like in Final Fantasy, WoW, now New World, all that stuff, right? Um, styling is incredible. And there's a lot of really, really important things to talk about with this. Styling is going to be a way for you to customize the visual effects of your skills, not just resource gathering, like customized actions, but your actual skills. The thing that they talked about in the global reveal was that you could turn wall of elements to be purple, for instance, right? That's very, very cool. And the cooler thing is that you earn it. You don't buy it in the store. Do I think that they're going to have some that you can buy in the store? 100%. And I hope that it's not going to be a lot. I hope it's going to be very minimal. And I hope that the ones that you get in game are cooler than the ones in the store. But the important thing that I don't think a lot of people are really catching on to with this and that a lot of people are now noticing is that styling opens the door for a number of different things. And Rich Lambert has even said this in a number of interviews. Basically, Styling allows you to customize your skills. What kind of skills do we have? That are, you know, what kind of skills do we have that we have been asking to customize? Pets, sort pets, right? That is your clan fear, your scamp, your um, your twilight harbinger, the warden bear, all of that stuff. Styling is 100% opening the door to customizing summonable pets. Necromancer minions, same thing. If you don't want to have a skeletal mage or a skeletal archer, but you want like a big flesh atronach, that's going to be a thing. That's a thing with styling. That's, it's opening the door for you to do that. They're starting with small coloration differences, and then they're going to transition into that stuff 100%. And it even says it here. There's also a new styling feature for existing abilities, essentially power customization that might eventually open the door for things like pet skins too, which is what people have been asking for for so long, and it's going to be freaking awesome. At launch, owners of Gold Road, Gold Road will have access to 22 unique styles for this system, and all of those, at least, 
will be earned through questing. During the press and influencer preview stream ahead of the show, Lambert answered multiple questions about the chapter and the future of the game. A few of the highlights. The team has no major sweeping overhauls on deck, although it's continuing to work on potions and food as remaining hybridization plans. Expect some in update 41. That's going to be sick. So basically, for instance, essence of spell power, essence of weapon power pots should just be essence of power pots, right? Because magicka, stamina, weapon power, spell power, all of that is going across the board. Now, I don't think that they're going to change anything with magicka versus stamina recovery. That would be quite a balancing issue to have you know just as much stamina recovery as you have magical recovery like that would that would change the game in a lot of ways it'd make sustain much easier so i'm curious to see what they do with that but food and potions i think that that makes sense lambert says story mode for dungeons is really hard because it's essentially a third difficulty mode it's on the list but probably isn't happening anytime soon yes zoss has plans for expanding infinite archive but doesn't want to spoil anything so let's go back to this because i forgot to mention this the thing that's going to be hard to balance is not necessarily... This is the thing. I don't think they need to change the difficulty that much for story mode. I don't think it's a third difficulty. I think it's more of a question of rewards and kind of how you would do it. A lot of these dungeons can be sold on normal. I'm not saying they all can by all players, but a lot of them can. What would be interesting is if you could just bring your companions into the dungeon with you or if they had set npcs that you could bring along with you in these dungeons that would serve as a tank a healer a dps whatever and would help you out so that you could do it but the the important thing here is you don't want to be able you don't want to be able to have the exact same rewards in story mode as you do in normal or veteran now um what I mean by that is obviously like you have the random normal, you have the random veteran, you get transmutes, XP, whatever. Um, if you wanted to activate story mode, I feel like it needs to be solely something from the group menu that you can do, not necessarily the activity finder. Um, there's a lot of things that could go into it because maybe you want to do story mode with just you and a buddy. I can solo most of the dungeons on normal, probably all of them, um, that have a soloable kind of content cadence in them, meaning you don't need two people for like a mechanic to progress. And I know that there's a lot of people that maybe play with their significant other or a buddy and that's all they do. You know, they don't do guilds. They don't like, you know, interacting too much with the MMO side of things. I think that would be interesting. But do you get the same gear um, drops? Meaning if the drop cadence in a story mode dungeon and a normal dungeon were the same, well, why, why would you run a normal dungeon then? It would be even easier to run the story mode dungeon and just grind that shit, right? So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, they're going to expand Infinite Archive, but doesn't want to spoil anything. What I would think that they would do is add more verses and visions, maybe some more arena locales instead of just in, um, you know, in Apocrypha with the kind of greenish blackish outlook. Maybe they go to different zones in the game, add new enemies, more bosses. Um, more types of loot, more rewards, maybe a new mount or something every year. I think that'd be interesting. Um, but I'm sure we'll hear more about that, hopefully in Update 41, when they tell us that they're buffing the class sets, dude. Okay. Improvements to guilds are also on the list. Players believe there aren't enough reasons to be in guilds. Zoss hears you. That's true. There's not really a reason to be in a guild, unless you just want it for the social stuff. I mean, obviously, like the trading guild system, currently, I think, is the, the only reason to do that. With the group finder, there's even less of a reason to be in a guild because I no longer need to go through guilds to find this stuff or stand in Craglorn. I can just be messing around doing dailies and sign up for one of the trials, right? Like there's not a lot of reason. Now group organization and stuff is great. Social events are fine, but there's not like any guild versus guild activities that are set in the game or anything like that, okay? Um, Crossplay is also something Zoss knows players want. No promises though. That's nice that it's at least in their mind be interesting balancing like the economies and stuff like that um but you know i'll leave that to them lambert doesn't like puzzles that gate progression he wants to do better puzzles while still balancing for the lowest common denominator i.e people who hate them and just look them up anyways 
I don't know what he's referring to with puzzles, uh, but let's continue. Similarly, similarly, open world content is balanced for casual play. Zoss is not going to make the open world game or story content too hard because they don't want people to quit. People who want challenges are funneled into dungeons. This is a very bad um, out of touch take, just straight up. And the reason for that is there is nobody, in my opinion, that has been playing ESO for a long time that is asking for you to completely buff and make the entire overland difficulty much harder across the board non-optionally what we want is a toggle we want to be able to talk to somebody and toggle that for us specifically i don't want to take away the experience from somebody else like if you're having a, a tough time with some of the story bosses or overland or the world bosses it should stay how it is and people that don't want it shouldn't be forced to do harder content if you love the way it is, you shouldn't be forced to do it. What we are asking for is the option to do so. So this is completely like him just not understanding what people are asking for, in my opinion. Let's continue. Inventory size and storage is an eternal question. The team knows that just increasing inventory doesn't fix it. It hurts server performance and players just want more anyway. So it's looking to reduce inventory pressure instead. Also, siege stacking is coming soon. Yeah, so I mean... Bigger stacks is always going to be better with all of this stuff. Um, I don't think people need more inventory space, but like, for instance, like when you get, like, I, I there most of the stuff like you just need to have across the board stacking if you can, right? And there's no reason that a lot of the stuff that doesn't stack couldn't stack, and there's no reason that our stacks are only two hundred. Like, we need to have like stacks of nine hundred ninety nine across the board for like soul gems and stuff like that like you can get a thousand soul gems it takes up five slots that could all be one slot right and it would just make your life a lot easier yes the devs are still working hard on pvp performance the pvp stuff in q4 is not cyrodiil related pvp is definitely a big part of our future it's about fucking time dude i'm not a pvp person but my god this game has incredible pvp i'm gonna i usually get into it during like you know white streaks mayhem and stuff like that but outside of that i generally don't because i like the double ap and events and the popularity during those times but we've had the same exact pvp experience we've been sieging the same buildings and the same keeps um the entire game for the last 10 years nothing in cyrodiil has changed they added the bridges whoop de doo they added volundrung whoop de doo that does not change the experience at all we need a variety of content. Battlegrounds need to be completely reworked, in my opinion. I don't like the 4v4v4. I'd rather see 6v6. I'd rather see 10v10. I'd rather there be an instance where you literally all spawn in as attackers or defenders against a keep, and you siege the keep, and you just see if the other team can take the keep in 20 minutes or something like that. If you win, great. If you don't win, great. Whatever. I think that that would be sick. I think smaller instances like that are awesome. I think 2v2 or 3v3 arenas would be cool. I think leaderboards with all that, with mounts and cosmetics is cool. Like there's so many things that they can do and the whole performance thing is not really a, a factor for that. They're working on performance for Cyrodiil because it's dog shit. I've never experienced performance issues in Battlegrounds and there's no reason that they haven't been able to create 2v2 and 3v3 arenas. That's that has nothing to do with PvP performance. That's a completely separate instance. It's like creating Dragon Star Arena and just having like leaderboards and stuff like that. Like there's no reason to not be able to do that. So that's that's what's been confusing and what a lot of people have been annoyed about is they've been working on PvP performance in Cyrodiil for a while, which is great, but it's because the zone is like the size of fucking Texas. Like it's huge. And you barely have any people in there. Like they've decreased the population cap over time for so long. I don't want to get into it, but like that's that's been the reason why it's been kind of confusing. So I'm I'm extremely excited for Q4 for those people, and I'm sure I'll get into it too a lot more during then. I'm putting a good PvP build together and I'll get into it, but yeah. Okay. Zoss says years one through nine were all about figuring the game out, figuring out what the game is and who wanted to play it. Ten and beyond is about more content and improving the game tech and making it all more accessible, and that includes more base game improvements. They Update 40, one of the reasons it was so incredible was because it was purely base game. Their quarter four updates and everything outside of the chapter needs to just be base game stuff. 
And that doesn't mean, oh, like you have to go to Rivenswire for this. It just means it needs to be available for free. Before what they were doing was they were charging for three DLC a year and an expansion, which was insane. On top of their extremely over the top crown store, it was it was a lot. So kind of what they've switched to now is they've got quarter one dungeon DLC pack, you pay for that. Quarter two chapter, you pay for that. Three is quality of life and bug fixes, that's free. And quarter four is a systems update for free. Perfect, that is absolutely fantastic. All right, what pushed the devs to do Gold Road? They mostly just wanted to do something very different from Hermaeus Mora and find a chunk of the world map and race they hadn't done a lot with, it just kind of fit. I'm freaking pumped, dude. All right. Uh, the rest of the year has now been laid out in roadmap form too. You've got the prologue quest for the chapter, quality of life tweaks, and the Oathsworn Pit and Bedlam Vale dungeons in Q1. Q2 is going to have the Gold Road chapter along with the Lucent Citadel trial along with performance improvements. Q3 has the undisclosed housing feature and quality of life updates. Quarter 4 has the PvP update and the addition of two companions. We will be talking about all of this stuff pretty much individually. We're going to be getting the Q1 ESO Live on this f upcoming Friday, which is the 26th, I believe. So I would be expecting PTS to be coming out on um, January 29th. So that'll be fantastic. I'm extremely excited for these two new dungeons. It's going to be absolutely incredible. The Lucent Citadel trial looks amazing. I'm super excited for the housing feature, all the quality of life updates. I hope they add more achievements like they did last year and everything. I mean, this is gonna be a freaking fantastic year and they're not even talking about all the stuff they're gonna to do to celebrate the 10 year anniversary. So I'm pumped. I hope y'all are too. I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next one. See ya.